Hey, good evening, everybody. Okay. So, I think how wonderful to have this opportunity for all of you to practice meditation. So, think about um, in this evening, in this area, just imagine the Woodstock. So, what is the population of the Woodstock, Nancy? Do you have any idea? Population of the Woodstock? 16,000. 16,000, yeah, okay. You know, that means a lot of people, right? A lot of people. But how many people practice meditation here? Maybe 25, something like that. So, so many people in the city just Woodstock, but very less people practicing meditation. So, in that case, you are my heroes, <coughs> right? You are wonderful. So, you made this trip. You know, I know some people came from the long distance to practice meditation. So, this life is a very wonderful opportunity for all of us. But most of people don't see the beauty of this human life. So, even you have a little bit of a taste about this human life, every time you feel and you taste it, you think about it, you feel, oh, I want to go to meditation. So that's how you get the encouragement to come to the temple, because you know the value of this life. I'm really sure you have enough food at home, right? Most of you to have something to eat at home, or maybe you have some kind of money, if you don't have food, then you can go and buy it, right? So, that means you have food. So, I'm really sure you are not homeless. People who are here, not homeless. You have a place to live. Somewhere you have a room or bed or even sleeping bag <laughs> to sleep, right? And so, maybe you have basic requisites to survive and enjoy your life. Now what you are living are you looking for more? What else? What else you are looking for now? Art, music. Yeah, art, music, yes. little fun, <laughs> right? Oh, little fun. Right? Entertainments and so you are looking for that. So what I can see in the society where we live now, most of us we have things. We have things. But how many people can say, I have everything, I'm so happy now? But very rarely I hear that. I know some people have beautiful houses, uh, expensive houses, some people have expensive vehicles, and everything is expensive. But they have everything, but only thing they are missing is the joy, happiness and balance. So now you have money, now I know sometimes people spending thousands of dollars to find happiness. So now I know some people practicing meditation eight, nine years, how many thousand and you spend for fine meditation here at the temple? Not much, but you help temple to you know, the maintenance and that's a total different story, but you didn't spend any money to find happiness here. So just you came here and <coughs> surrender and you become part of this uh, home and you are looking for something deep, you receive it. You receive it. That's why I said you are very fortunate to have this opportunity. So don't leave this path. If you leave, I am fine. Right? I am not getting upset because my happiness is not dependent on your decisions. But I am requesting, now already you made this trip. Right? Some new people, maybe you are going to have some taste today, but I am talking about the people who practice meditation. For any reason, you are leaving this path. It is very unfortunate. Why? You made it, you found it, now you have to work on it. You have to earn it. If you don't do it, you cannot get it. So now think about you know the, your life. You earn your life. 
So you work hard, you had your education, uh, you had your skills, now you have a good job, you build a nice house, now you have everything because you earn it, because working hard. Same way if you need uh, spiritual contentment, more than happiness I am calling. Happiness always come and go. So if you are looking for spiritual contentment, you have to work on it. So sometimes people are asking, how long I had to work on it? <laughs> then I said, lifetime. <laughs> right? You have to work on lifetime. So we are so conditioned to here in this country because we are following the courses, three months, six months, four year, uh, you know, the bachelor degree, something like that. Sometimes people come to the temple, a uh, very common question they ask, how long I have to meditate? So they think after practicing two months or one month, uh, six months, then they are going to different levels. It is not true. So still I am practicing more than 30 years, still difficult, still I am processing and work on it. So you have to practice until you die. Maybe uh, you have to continue after death according to the Buddhism. There is no end. So if you stop, that means again you go to the same point, same problem. So. Because we are so habitual, our minds are conditioned. So always we try to um, uh, look for something pleasurable, joyful. So the pleasurable things always come and go. But practicing meditation, doing meditation, if you receive something, it is not pleasurable. It is not pleasurable, right? Yeah. So that experience is wise. Uh, is with loving kindness, it, uh, it with more awareness practice, and it will stay with you. So, what I am suggesting you now, don't give up this path. So, when I say that don't give up this path, no, I am not asking to make my people, my followers, and the members for the Blue Lotus Temple. I am just asking with love and compassion because I can see the beauty of this practice. I know some people last 10, 11 years practicing with me, I can see the tremendous difference in their lives. Maybe you don't see it that much. But as an observer every day sitting with you here, I observe so much. That means you change blood. So change happening every day, day by day, moment by moment. So that means how much commitment you are making to practice. So I know some people, they are really regular, they are practicing every day. Sometimes they don't come to the temple, you know, every day and weekly, but they have a home practice. Some people make that commitment to practice. So sometimes people asking how long I am practicing, you know, the sitting meditation. Then I am telling people, how about um, uh, five minutes? You can make five minutes. How much time for uh, you put yourself every day? to take a shower, taking care of your body, so much time sometimes. But how much time you spend for your mind? Maybe zero sometimes. So if you don't put the time for your mind, whatever energy you are putting for other things is useless sometimes. Why? You don't have time to enjoy it. So, you know, I can see some people have money, so then they don't have a peaceful mind, they cannot enjoy the money. Sometimes people have beautiful houses, then they don't have peace in their mind, they, they cannot enjoy the house. So when they don't have peace in their mind, then they cannot enjoy the family. So your spirituality is the number one. Your spirituality is the number one. So when you have your spiritual practice, I'm not talking about the religion, okay? I'm talking about the spiritual practice, meditation practice, you have to put 100% your energy for that if you want to enjoy other things in your life. So, what I can see now, people giving last opportunity for the spiritual life. Give all the energy for other things, then all the problems, and then they don't know how to find the solutions. So today, um, usually I have good days. <laughs> today I had the best day, I can say. and so. I did a lot of work, I did a lot of activities in the temple and you know, a lot of you know, the administration things. And so after that then I had the time to eat and uh, time to exercise, then I had the dinner with uh, two good friends of mine and 
So I had a really good day. So then after having that good day, I was, you know, the watching and observing myself. And then I was thinking, how happy I am. So then I was looking for some unhappiness. <laughs> right? That's interesting. More than enjoying what I have, I'm looking for, is there unhappiness, something to worry, something to be sad? Then I was keep digging in my bag, and is there anything to be unhappy? Thanks, I didn't find anything yet. <laughs> I, I don't know, still I have a few hours to go. Maybe I will find something in the <laughs> late night. I don't know yet. But how wonderful to have that moment. Then I realized another thing. Maybe that will change. That's the part of life too. So if I'm really doing my practice again and again and again, I can keep my life balanced. Every day I'm happy. Sometimes people say, oh, every day I cannot be happy. Why? Life is not balanced. Remember once I said there is no such a word balanced. I figured it is balancing. Always what we are doing this meditation practice, we are balancing our life. Keep practicing, keep practicing. One day, according to the Buddhist teaching, after we uh, reach the enlightenment, then we can say, I am balanced. I am totally balanced now, like Buddha, right? Or enlightened one. So what happened to us, always we are going like this. Today I am happy, tomorrow I am unhappy. Right? So then you have to understand, okay, yes, I understood today, I'm happy today, maybe tomorrow I will be extremely terrible and unhappy. And so that moment also I have to prepare myself to accept that. Then I can make my life happy. So the best thing we can do, live your life moment to moment. When I say that, then people ask, then how I'm going to do my business? How I'm going to do my work? How I'm going to do my family time with my children? How I'm going to plan for my you know, my children, the college, right? All those things I'm planning. So when you can do moment to moment, you can do a better plan, right? When you make, you know, the, like days and years and years, then you are going crazy. So what I figured, if I do moment to moment, it doesn't mean you are not thinking about the future. In this moment, thinking about your future, just do whatever you are doing now, then your future will be fine. Otherwise, we are so worrying about the future. Sometimes we are worrying about our past and so much regret. So just being in this moment, understanding what happened in past, then correct your life in this moment. Then you can enjoy this moment. Right? So I remember long, like seven, eight years ago, when I was in McHenry County College. So. Uh, I was, you know, the studying psychology, Western psychology, and so one day, uh, my teacher, uh, he likes me so much. So once in a while, I go to his office and sit down and talk. And one day, before I leave the off, you know, his office, uh, then he said, "Oh, Bande, have a good day. Right? Have a good day." I said, "Thank you so much. Have a good moment." <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I said to him. I didn't plan to say that. It automatically came to my mouth and, you know, I just said it. Then uh, he asked me, what does that mean? <laughs> right? Then he said, oh, I'm in a hurry, but it doesn't matter. Please come back to the office and let's spend like five minutes with me and explain to me what you said. It's really deeply hit in his mind. Even he's hurrying between the classes. I'm hurrying to go to my class too. Then I said, if you really focus in this moment, your next moment will be fine. Then your next moment will be fine. Just live moment to moment, enjoy each action what you are doing. It doesn't mean you are forgetting about your past or forgetting about your future. In this moment, you have past and future, both action in this moment. You cannot talk about the present moment without past and future. Right? There, is, there is no such thing for the present moment. So my message for you this evening, life is a beautiful opportunity for all you to enjoy. As I always talking, uh, telling you, and you know the suffering is optional, right? So you have to make a decision what you are going to do in your life. So I made the decision one day in my life, suffering is optional, 
I suffered a lot. Still, I, I had to suffer a lot. This physical, you know, the pain and aches and things. So, it is, you know, the obvious I had to go with the physical pain, phys physical suffering. But mental suffer suffering, I can always take care of. I always I can take care of. So, this meditation practice, my spiritual journey, not being a monk, being a spiritual person and trying so hard and always bring so much joy and balance to my life. Now I can see the life always going like this. Now it's getting less now. It's try to balance. Right? So when you put more energy into that, then you are little by little, little by little, go and like this and go and settle down. Then finally you balance. Then we can call ourselves, we are enlightened. Right? So don't hurry for that. Still, I need you. <laughs> and so, but start your journey. Start your journey. You already started your journey. You already have all the uh, abilities and also you have all the tools in your life. Sometimes it's a little sad and disappointing because I don't want to get disappointed. I just use those words. And we have all the tools. We have all the tools to fix our problems. What happened? We are sitting on the toolbox. So, it's like sitting on the cushion. right? We are sitting on the toolbox and then we are looking for the tools. We don't know how to fix our lives. So, what you have to do, now practicing meditation, doing this journey, you have all the tools. You know what is the problem. You know what is the problem in your mind. No need to explain. Just close your eyes, then you can see what is my problem. So, take the you know, get up, you know, this, you know, you are sitting on the toolbox, you have to get out and open the toolbox and fix yourself. Otherwise, maybe another 20 or 30 years, still you are sitting on the toolbox. Because when you are born into this world, we come with those spiritual tools. That's what I figured. But, being distracted, uh, you know, having all the other distractions, doing with other things, with the people and the society, we lost ourselves not lost, even we cannot see all the good skills, all the good tools we have. So when you come to the temple and when you sit and when you have some time for yourself, so I can say you pause yourself, you stop everything, then you go look within, so then you can see what is happening inside. So when you meditate today, how many people experience mind is wandering? Right? So, how many people experience? We all did, right? So, then what you did? You saw it, what is happening, right? When you experience that, then you can do something for that. So, when you are outside, you are doing the same thing. But problem is, you don't have the time to watch. You don't have time to watch. When you come and settle down, you can see what exactly happening inside you. So, one day, one person came to meditation. So, it's very interesting. The first time meditation, then I asked him, how, how was it? Then he said, oh my God, I'm so scared. <laughs> right? So then I asked, why? My mind start to wandering very fast. Then I said, now you know, you figured you have a mind. <laughs> you have a mind. That's why it's water. So now I asked him, how old are you now? Then he said, I'm 28 years old. So 20 years, you know, being 20 years in your life, you, you didn't see your mind? He said, no, I didn't. I didn't have time to watch. That's what he said. So <laughs> when you come and sit down and we call the practice of meditation, then you know who exactly what I'm doing inside. You can see demons, you can see saints sometimes, you can see anger. You can see frustration and disappointment and, you know, the wandering mind and sometimes it's like a disaster. <laughs> so, when you observe, you know, now totally your life, you are putting all the energy outside, right? So, when you come here, totally you go inside, you look within, then you can see all the disasters, what is happening, then you can secure yourself. So, that is what meditation all about, that's what meditation do for yourself. So, I hope you can understand that and please continue your journey.
right? And I'm all, always suggesting people who practice with me longer period of time, and also if you are new to meditation practice, always make a private and personal appointment once in a while, like every three, four months, and talk to the monks and you know, they ask you know, how my practice is going, how, where I'm at now and how I experience about my spiritual journey. These are the questions I have, I need some answers. That guidance is very important. Then that way, you getting better and you getting stronger and you feel more confidence about your practice. It's very important to feel that way. If you don't lose, uh, if you lose your confidence, then practice is not stable. So, why I am asking to spend some personal time, then we can see how established you are. Right? If you are like a shaky, so then you can say, you know, these are the weak points, then you can help. Or maybe sometimes you can help me to see my weak points, and you can say, Bhante, you are weak here, you have to fix yourself. Sometimes it will happen too. So that's why we have to make some personal time. So I am always suggesting that. So any questions for this evening? Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you. So, anything else? Any suggestions, comments, concerns? Yes. Just something to add. Mm -hmm. um, as part of our toolbox, um, uh, we we say my wish every mm -hmm. day after every meditation. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday, where I work, was there was a box elder. There were thousands of everywhere, mm -hmm. but it was it's in a large, busy shopping mm -hmm. place. So I picked up the bug and carry the bug outside mm -hmm. and put the bug onto a bush. Mm -hmm. And um, the joy of it was that I've been practicing long enough to be mindful of what that did for me. Mm -hmm. Not what I did for the bug, right, right. but what saving the bug did for me. And, right. it, and it made me, as I walked back into my place of work, mm -hmm. it made me feel compassionate mm -hmm. and kind and right. Mm -hmm. And I was able to move through a long period of my day with a great deal of joy mm -hmm. because I was practicing right action, right thinking, all those things. And that's wonderful that's, story. That's the toolbox that yeah. is there for us to open whenever right. we want. Right, exactly. That's why I suggested you have wonderful you know, most expensive <laughs> toolbox <laughs> and with all the tools and so you are safe. You are safe. So it's a great experience. Thank you so much for sharing. Anything else? Anything? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. I could expand on that just mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, the building that I work in, we have access for all sorts of things. I don't want to go out into bug talk here or anything, but mm -hmm. um, we get spiders, all sorts of stuff, bees, uh, wasps, you know, that make their way into our building. And I have my bug cup mm -hmm. and a little piece of paper and I catch things and I take them outside. Mm -hmm. And I've been thinking that now it's getting so cold out, if I put those bugs outside, they're going to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of having a dilemma as to what mm -hmm. to do with bugs now. Yeah. <laughs> so my suggestion being extreme, we cannot live in this society too, right? And so maybe they will find a place. But your intention is there. So you cannot live with them inside the room, right? <laughs> so they, you cannot, yeah. So we have to understand that. Try your best. So you trying and serving the life and leave it outside, then he will find the place. They, they laugh at me. You know? right. I'm the boss. Right. And if they were with my Dixie cup and I'd be saying, you know, take them outside. Right. They laugh at me. Right. They'll say, oh, there's a bug in here. Are you going to go save it? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. I do. Right. Good. You know, that's, again, as you explain, your intention is wonderful. You know, that's how wonderful. That's a part of the loving kindness practice, you know. But we cannot save the whole world, but in that moment. But I still right. don't understand mosquitoes, ticks, and fleas, okay? <laughs> 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 <I'm>, <laughs> you know, I'm always suggesting try your best. Try your best. You know, you cannot, you know, fix everything. So, anything else? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on this, uh, um, that as I try to bring a mindfulness more into my daily life when I'm not on the cushion, mm -hmm. it, it seems to be getting easier to do off the cushion sometimes, mm -hmm. once in a while. Um, when I go on the cushion, like today I caught myself getting angry and depressed, and it was totally invented, totally created in like kind of a fantasy about some stuff. That I'm involved in inventing things that, you know, as Mark Twain once said, um, 
the worst thing <laughs> that happened and never actually happened. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you come and make things up. And, mm -hmm. you know, I find it easier to catch myself, I guess, if you yeah. be mindful of the, the poor mental hygiene habits mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. self-harm I do myself. Right. And um, a lot of that, you know, comes from, um, you know, what I learned here and stuff like that. I'm grateful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Oh, those are experiences, you know, wonderful experiences. Some days are good. Some days are difficult. That's okay. Being difficult some days, don't give up. So I have so many difficult moments and difficult days. But it doesn't mean I'm totally disappointed myself. No. Always enjoy the good thing and try to do more. Right? Day by day you can add more things to that. So when you see some weaknesses one day, that is the time you can test yourself. Step back. Right, exactly. Step back. Don't be disappointed about that experience. Then there is a chance for you to test yourself how you are doing, so then you can see your weak points. Mm -hmm. Then next time, then you can do a better job. And, and as advertised, when I do turn mindfulness to it, it, it kind of evaporates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay then, everybody enjoy it. Uh, thank you so much.